right. All right, so welcome to our lightning round sessions here on Big Talk from Small Libraries. First up, we have Amber Alexander. Good afternoon, Amber. Hello. Um, she's a library director at, an, oh, I didn't say how to pronounce this, the Presque Isle District Library? Presque Isle District Library. Oh, yes. Um, and then population served is, because they are a district, um, uh, their full population for all of the, the whole district is 14,878. Is that the correct most recent number? That's it, yep. Oh, yep. Until the 20th census and we get a new number. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and um, she's going to talk about their library at the theater program, which sounds really fun, if you ask me. <laughs> so go ahead and take it away, Amber. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, uh, my program is Library at the Theater. Um, I've been director here for three years, and I started uh, December of 2015. And the first thing I did was take on a theater. Um, a little bit about our district. Again, we're class four library with population of 14,878. Um, our square mileage is 2,573. Um, it's, it's a smaller county, but we, you know, we have um, a lot of loving people here in our community. We do have two townships on our outlying border, and we were established as a district library back in 1992. Uh, we have five branches. They are Roger City, uh, Grand Lake, which is over here, uh, Posen, Millersburg, and Onaway in the state of Michigan. And you can see kind of where we're at on the mitten. Uh, Onaway, uh, we only own actually three buildings. The other three we rent. Um, but the Onaway location, which we rent, is actually in the basement of old uh, historic courthouse. And you take it on a theater, you know, it sounded really easy. <laughs> uh, the Roger City Theater, the history of it, it was a, a theater constructed in 1937. It's a classic single screen, small town movie palace at Art Deco style. And it's a downtown landmark. People have remembered it for decades. It's always been a love of the whole area. And a retired attorney decided to purchase it when the owner wanted to retire. And he had a love of music and performing arts. So he removed some of the seating and created a stage in there um, and set up a uh, theatrical lighting and utility improvements. And in 2004, they started having live productions. And in 2009, the exterior was renovated. And I'll show you pictures of that in a minute. And they also had a Kickstarter campaign started in 2013 to upgrade the digital projection system, which it is a huge cost. And it was very nice to have that kind of taken care of before we took on the theater. So um, the community really supported the theater. And, uh, you know, just you have to drive 40 minutes away just to go to the movies, um, in it, uh, either north or south of us, to Sheboygan or Alpena. So they really wanted to keep the theater open and, and uh, available to the community. And here's our marquee. It's the original marquee. The lights are still shining. Um, he had everything, anything broken on there has been replaced and fixed. And all we have to do is change the light bulbs and, and hopefully no more. Uh, it'll, it'll last us a lifetime. And here's uh, a before and picture of it, uh, early 1940s. There was actually uh, two businesses on each side, but um, when it was restored, the one side remains a business, which is on the parking lot side, but the other side he renovated in the inside and was able to provide uh, handicap accessible uh, bathrooms for the theater. And here's the inside of our theater, 280 seats. It's handicap accessible. There's even a ramp on the left to the stage, um, going up to the, to the stage. The older seating you see on either side and in the middle is the newer seating with cup holders. Um, again, that was all community funded before the library took it on. And on the left, you'll see a little guy sitting there, and his name is Art, and he is our permanent guest um, from the previous owner, and he serves as a photo opportunity for many guests. And a lot of people, when they come to the theater, they'll get their picture taken with Art. The Roger City Community Theater is an organization, nonprofit, um, that has shows about six plays a year. Um, at the theater, and they have, they include the summer youth theater, they have casting ages from six to 94, they perform six musicals a year, um, but they're, they actually rent the space from us, and by doing that, they've helped us 
um, sustain that building moving forward because if they weren't able to do that, we would have ran into issues in, in, in operating the building. And right here, um, this is their, one of their recent plays, which was, I mean, it brought in people from the region and even people from out of our region coming up to see this. It was the Shrek the Musical. And there I am with Shrek and Donkey. And, and uh, we have Lord Farquaad and uh, the Marinettes that played with them on there. And that was a really fun show. For staffing, it was difficult to find a person to take on the challenge of managing in the beginning because it was all new for us as a library. Um, and the previous owner, it was his hobby. So he didn't really have anything written down procedure-wise moving forward. So it was difficult to get that going. Um, the first one declined our offer. And so we went and second one didn't work out. Um, wasn't very passionate about his his, his job and his role in the community. Um, but the previous owner had a transition plan, so he worked with us. So when those uh, happened, he was able to step up and continue doing what he did before until we could find somebody that really wanted this job in this position. And then we wonder, landed a wonderful manager, and uh, he didn't mind taking on new roles and offered creative ideas for new programming and procedures. And actually, that's him here playing Lord Farquaad, and he's actually six foot tall, and he had to play that on his knees on knee pads the whole time. So it was fun, and this he was new to our community and new as a manager, and the community really loved seeing him um, do not only the, the business of the uh, managing the theater, but also uh, at working with the community theater and being a part of that. Some of the hurdles we came with was we had to create new job descriptions. Um, we had to come up with what if the manager's sick? What do we do? Who's going to be backup for them? So we have several library on our staff that um, know what to do. And he's also set up a lot of procedures moving forward. So we have like a, a theater Bible that we can use to reference for um, any movie showings or anything like that. We also had to come up with new policies to include the theater, just like our conference room policies, and if there would be any cost for um, nonprofits, that, or not, not, there's no cost to nonprofits, but if you're a for-profit, there would be cost for that involved. Um, we had to contract with uh, film companies and use a broker to get some of the first run, run films. Um, we only stick with really high uh, first run films that are gonna do that people really want to see, and those are the ones we show. Um, we had to learn how to ingest films. We had to learn how to use the digital projection system and just overall theater operation protocol. Um, there were maintenance issues in the sense of the boilers were uh, out of date and needed updating and advertising. Uh, we had to upgrade our advertising budget and just educating the public on the transition. They were so used to looking for a spot for all the movies and stuff, and we had to change it up a little bit because we're, we're a library, we're nonprofit, and we're trying to not have such a huge advertising bill. So just being able to put that out publicly on Facebook and on website for free and making sure that they know that they can go to those areas to see what's up and coming. Tax, taxes was also an issue, and um, and we are still working with the city on getting the taxes uh, um, taken off that, and that should be actually done this month. And we also had to learn new concessions and stuff. So that was, uh, and with the inventory involved with that, so that was all new for us. Uh, this provided an opportunity, though. We've been able to engage with our community. These are the organizations we were able to engage with. We ha had a town hall survey with the city of Roger City. Roger City Elementary Schools have come and watched uh, educational films, so as the middle of high school. Uh, Thunderbird Marine Sanctuary has film festivals that we have here, and people come from our region to watch. Uh, the Great Lakes Lore Maritime Museum um, has a bell ringing for the uh, Bradley that sank on Lake Michigan, which many of the uh, survivors, or not, there was, there was only two survivors, but many people that died on it were from Roger City. And we actually have a film the library created from that that we were able to play with the bell ringing. 
uh, Preskill Historical Museum, Friends of Roger City Library, the DDA, and the Zonta Group, who is bringing in the FBI agent to talk to locals, uh, uh, high schoolers, the, the, the girls, about uh, human trafficking. So these are some more of our programs. We have, we, again, we play first run films. We have Homespun, which is local folk artists um, having their music and things played. Um, and the, the, the community really loves those. Uh, film festivals, we just had an Audrey uh, Hepburn Film Festival. We've had an Alfred Hitchcock, um, a John Wayne. So we, we, we continue, and these, these movies are free. So people can come and make a donation and we have the concessions open and they can come and enjoy some free movies over the weekend. Uh, we have a lot of musicians and bands that have come. Uh, let's see, Akiok River Boys, uh, Blackthorn, Charlie Don't Surf, uh, ML Liebler, Peter Bergen, Swing Bands, Classic, the whole gamut we've had come and play at our theater. Uh, we've had free family movies. The one that we just did over uh, Christmas was Polar Express, and we had we sponsored with the city on that, and we provided, the city helped provide uh, hot chocolate uh, cookies. We had Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus come after the film, and we had bells where the kids could ring, and they brought out Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus, and they got to watch the film. It was a great experience for the whole community, and they really loved it. And we also had a TEDx there as well, and I will just play just the first little bit here because it shows a little bit of our theater. wonderful to be back in Rogers City on the shores of Lake Huron, which in my estimation is the greatest of the Great Lakes. Many people, many people when they first see Lake Huron um, are surprised. Its size and vistas seem more fitting of an ocean or a sea rather than a mere lake. Those of you who live on the shore or who work on the water, Lake Huron is, is like a slightly moody friend. And I think we take a lot of pride in knowing the lake, its moods, its quirks, its weather. But what if I were to tell you there is a vast undiscovered country with broad plains, towering cliffs, majestic waterfalls that exist just beyond your shoreline? There is such a country. So that was uh, John O'Shea and he is an anthropologist and was able to discover um, that there is a whole ancient civilization from, of caribou hunters under Lake Huron that thrived beneath Lake Huron um, at the last ice age 9,000 years ago. So he actually thought, discusses that, and that's available on YouTube for anybody that would like to watch it. So some of our future projects for this is renovating where the scoop shop was. There was a scoop shop on the side that our previous owner had. He's no longer there, and frankly, we're not in the business to sell ice cream. So we will be adding a special library up in that area and a seating area where coffee is available, um, and also campaigning for and providing a competition for an art mural along the side of the building, um, on the parking lot side, so that it creates more of a downtown appeal and it, it, and it fits with what the City of Roger City wants to accomplish for the downtown area. So some of the box office wisdom. Definitely had to keep a growth mindset on this. Libraries are ever changing in their role. Libraries are not just about books, uh, and it fits our mission. The Preskill District Library provides literary and educational materials and services that include artistic, cultural, and educational programs meeting the needs and interests of our patrons and the general public. And my husband, he's a, a, a Marine, and you know, improvise, adapt, and overcome, and we've definitely pulled that off with this. It's definitely um, a shining star in our community, and they really love that uh, the library was able to keep the theater open for our community. So if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. There's my website, my email's there, and uh, it was fun. We always have fun creative, creating our programs and uh, events around the theater and working with people to just help educate and keep the cultural and prosperity of our community 
continuing forward. Great. Thank you so much, Amber. That is, that was, like I said, that's, I think it's a fun program you got there and great keeping that theater going. All right.